Health, of course, they say, is wealth. And of course, for those of you that are very much aware, you know, every Thursday on IKD 106.1 FM, it's a day we set aside for not just conversations, but very healthy conversations. Today being the 14th of April, 2022, we have the opportunity and the privilege, of course, to sit again in the studio and discuss health matters. Because, of course, just like I said earlier, your health is your wealth. Today, we look at a disease that has caused the red blood cells to break down and cause a lot of tragedy, trouble to the body system. This disease is called sickle cell disease. And that will be our focus today on the issues here at IKD 106.1 FM. My name is Adi Bambo, or Payami, saying welcome, welcome to the issues. First of all, I sincerely do apologize for the delay. <laughs> Unavoidably, <laughs> we have to proceed with the program. We go ahead straight ahead today on the issues. I should let you know that General Hospital again have done the onion of giving us a renounced consultant, a man who knows his onion so well, I would say that a consultant that we call a hematologist, no other person than Dr. Francis Enenebaku will be our guest for today in the studio while we'll talk about sickle cell disease. Uh, I come down straight to you, uh, Mr. Francis. Good afternoon to you, sir. Good afternoon. It's good to have you in the studio. Thank you very much. And uh, I want to say uh, <laughs> it's, it's an honor, of course, to have a consultant such as you in the studio. Thank you very much. All right, so uh, Dr. Francis, without wasting much of our time, our time is far spent already. When we talk about sickle cell disease, uh, we all know that uh, it's a disorder in the red blood cell, but there is so much more to this. How do we define or how do you explain this disease called sickle cell? Uh, uh, sickle cell disease is, is, is a group of disorders in you know, which um, there's um, affectation of the hemoglobin molecule. Um, the, at the molecular level, in the beta chain of the hemoglobin at position 6, valine replaces Valium replaces glutamic acid, so that is what um, that is what um, brings about the sickle cell, red cell. Okay. Um, inheritance it can it can be homozygous. In which case, it means the two your two hemoglobin molecules are both S. That could be heterozygous, in which you have one S molecule with another hemoglobin. Um, the homozygous state is, is the most severe form of, of the illness and we refer to it as sickle cell anemia. The presence of other hemoglobin makes, um, ameliorates the cause of the disease in other people with, with the S hemoglobin. Essentially, what the hemoglobin S does is um, under, the, under the oxygenated state, it sickles, it crystallizes, then it aggregates and then polymerizes. So forming a chain which eventually occludes the lumen of the microvascular microvasculature of the organ. So um, oh, all right. Uh, sorry, Dr. Francis. Sorry to cut you there. With all that you have said, I, for one, right now, am very much lost. I know okay, it. <laughs> okay. Let's, let's see what to say. Okay. Um, normal, normal adult hemoglobin yes. yeah, functions to carry oxygen from the lungs to the various tissues of the body. Mm. So the functions of the hemoglobin molecule is to supply the tissues of the body, oxygen. But in, in hemoglobin S disease, yes, it supplies oxygen. Yes. Uh, after supplying oxygen, it becomes deoxygenated. When it becomes deoxygenated, it's, it's, um, it now has the ability to deform, sickle, when it sickles, it crystallizes, that it seems to precipitate, okay. and then it pulls other red cells okay. to itself, that's aggregating, and as they pull, they form a mass, 
eventually forming a chain. That is what we mean by polymerization. And this in the smaller in the small vessels of the tissue will lead to blocking of those vessels, preventing supply of oxygen to distal organs at the from the point of um, occlusion. Okay, so uh, Dr. Francis, with what you said earlier, is, is that to say that sickle cell disease is hereditary? Yes, it's, it's hereditary. It's hereditary. Yes, because it's hereditary. Some, some will just tell you that uh, it's not really hereditary. It's, it's, just, uh, it's hereditary. It's hereditary. So what exactly causes this sickle cell disease? What causes it? Um, in, in, in normal adults, we have... Um, various hemoglobin molecules. The, the, the normal um, adult hemoglobin, which we call hemoglobin A, yes. has um, the globin chain of this, has alpha, two alpha and two beta chain. That is what you call the normal, the normal, um, is it? but in, in, sickle, in sickle cell, yes. the beta chain, There's a substitution of, of an amino acid for a lymphoglutamic acid, and that is what gives the hemoglobin molecule the capacity to, to sickle and crystallize. Um, inheritance has to do with the parents. Mm. People come, well, and that's why we talk about genotypes. When you do genotypes, you have people who are, who are AA, someone who, who's AA has two hemoglobin molecules that are both A. Mm. You have people who are AS. I mean, they have one A and one S. You have people who are SS. It means they have two S hemoglobins. You have people who are AC. They have one A and one C. So, um, in, in, um, in embryology, in the formation of the fetus, both parents will have to donate. Mm. So in each pregnancy, one parent donates one. If you are if you are AA, it means that in each this you will donate an A. Mm. Your other partner, one to, um, in case of sickle cell, now it, your other partner can be AS or can be SS. Mm. If you are SS, it means you will don you will always donate one S in each pregnancy. But for that person who is AS, mm. in, in each pregnancy, he can either donate an A or he can donate an S. So if, if, you have a, if you have two partners where one partner is AA and the other partner is AS, it means that their siblings will either be AA or their, 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 their children will either be AA or AS. Yes. But if you have a partner where one person is AS and one person and the other partner is AS, that they are both AS. It means that in each pregnancy, both can donate A and A with the resulting child being an AA. One can donate A and the other can donate S, S. and the resulting child will be an AS. AS. And one can donate S, the other will donate S, and your resulting child will be SS. SS. So you will give her to a child with sickle cell anemia. Okay, uh, thank you so very much, uh, Dr. Francis. Uh, we are still here in the studio at IKD 106 for one FM, where we talk about sickle cell disease. We all know that this is one disease that is so much uh, on spread out in our society, our community today. But then, that is why we have Dr. Francis and Nene Baku from Ikorodu General Hospital doing justice to the conversation. We have made a very clear definition of what the disease called sickle cell is, and at the same time, you have allowed the general public know that this is a disease that is actually hereditary. Now, there are persons that are out there with this disease called sickle cell. How then can we manage sickle cell? Because to some people, there is actually nothing you can do about it. So how do such persons that are actually battling with the disease right now manage sickle cell? Um, individuals management of, of this is individualized because um, the presentation varies from person to person. Okay. Some people 
their, their disease runs a mild cause while others their disease runs a severe cause. Mm. But regardless of, of um, what your cause is, once you, you know your genotype and you know that you are SS, you have sickle cell anemia, then you, you should be registered at a clinic or a hospital where you can be looked after and you come in for regular full ups. Mm. So um when they're in steady state, when they are they are okay, their medications will give them to keep them to keep them um, going. The hemoglobin yes, is um precipitated to hemolysis. As the red cells hemolyze, they have a shortened red lifespan when compared to other to hemoglobin A. Mm -hmm. so, so that means um, their body will always be in need to make up for and make more red cells mm -hmm. to to keep them going. Um, Presentation when they are ill varies. Some come in complaining of um, tiredness, tiredness, fatigue, in which case um, it means when you complain of that, we'll have to check your blood level to see, to know what it's like. If it's low, then we'll, we'll need to transfuse you. I don't come in with crisis. The most common crisis is um, the occlusive crisis which results in pain. And essentially, it's the occlusion of the microvasculature to, to the different organs. When it's in the bone, you, you have bone pain. So it's it's um, what you come in with that determines what you will do for you. Mm -hmm. Essentially, when you come with crisis, what we we'll, we'll try to do, we we'll evaluate you by doing your baseline tests. Mm -hmm. Then we we'll rehydrate you. The rehydration helps to free up because um, okay states of dehydration infection extremes of temperature acidosis predisposes sickly so predisposes crisis when you come in we rehydrate you we'll give you a prophylactic antibiotic we'll give you analgesia analgesics um, what is given is um, dependent on, on the, uh, the severity of your pain. Mm. So, the aim at the end of the day is to resolve the, the painful episode, to get you well again, and to let you go home. Okay, so by, by you saying, Dr. Francis, by you saying to get you well again, mm -hmm. so many persons used to say that uh, <laughs> sickle cell cannot be cured. But with this, you saying to get you well, are you trying to say, Dr. Francis, that sickle cell is curable? Curable. Curable. When I say get you well, it, it means get you, um, get you in a state where you, you can go about your normal daily activities. activities. It's, it's a chronic illness. Mm. Yeah, it can be debilitating depending on the on the severity, but something that you can live with. Mm. Um, when you talk of cure, cure infers um, infers um, trying to change your state permanently. Yeah, there, there are different modalities of um, modalities of cure. Um, for for at the extreme of it, for those who listen, you can offer them allogenic bone marrow transplantation. Allogenic tr bone marrow transplant essentially means um, you try to infuse the marrow of someone else into the person. Mm -hmm. uh, you try to infuse the marrow of someone with a hemoglobin into the person. And the aim is, at the end of the day, to change the person's um, the person's genotype from SS to AS, yes. so that it means if 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 the marrow if the transplantation goes well, 
the body will start making both S and both A. So it's so possible for a, 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 an ASS person to become AS? Yes, it's possible. It's possible by medical technique. By medical technique. So yes. what happens to the part where some people would say that uh, there is a particular age at which a sickle cell person can overcome this disease? How true is that statement? Overcome. Uh, I, I think what um, I mean is at some point you become more stable. You become more stable and okay. you come down with less crisis. Oh, okay. Yeah, that is what's what I mean by overcome. Okay. Actually, if, if from childhood you begin to have care and you have adequate care, your, this and your, your episodes of crisis should be much reduced. Uh, we also have medications which help with this. So, um, a drug called um, um, carbamide hydroxyurea, which we give. It's part of the routine drugs that we, we, we give to those who have severe, severe, um, who have severe cause of the disease. Um, what hydroxyurea does is, um, one, it's a cytoreductive drug, so we use it to bring down the WBC count, which is involved in, in the inflammatory response that triggers off the painful crisis. It also helps in building up and elevating the level of hemoglobin F. The presence of hemoglobin F seems to ameliorate the disease. Mm. Since to give them a mild cause of disease where they, they they don't come down with crisis so often. Mm. So hydroxyurea helps to build build that. Oh okay. All right. I, I apologize to those that are trying to reach us. We have very limited time. We have less than just five minutes to sign out from the studio. We still have in the studio Dr. Francis. Let's take in just one call if possible on zero nine zero four zero eight one. 1061 0904081 just one phone call that has to do with the disease called sickle cell so coming down to you before we call it a day dr francis i must say thank you for still being a part of this uh beautiful healthy conversation and uh, bringing you down to the studio i know how stressful that could be so i say thank you once again for that what are the symptoms that one would actually see in a sickle cell patient Symptoms. Yes. And that's what they complain of. Um, tiredness. Pains. Mm. Varying degrees of pain. Um, they have ulcers of the legs. Um, in pregnancy, yes. you can have um, you can have miscarriages. You can have um, growth retardation. Mm. It can it can result in still beds. So. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, so, how true is the statement that uh, sickle cell patients do not live for so long? Or rather, should I say that at what age exactly does a sickle cell patient live to? Only God determines how long a man lives. So. Um, because they have recurring episodes of um, of painful crisis, which can be it can be debilitating, it can be. And then, okay, painful crisis is when you have pain. Apart from that, they they have, they, they, could have, they could have a stroke. Okay. Because if if there's infection in the brain, they could have a stroke. So it can also affect the eyes. Mm. It can affect every organ of the body. Hmm. So. All right. Uh, thank you so very much, uh, Dr. Francis. I will tell you for free, Dr. Francis, that this conversation has not ended because we actually had a limited time. In as much as I still have very bogus questions here to ask you, but time is telling me, hey, you can't do that to Dr. Francis. So I want to say thank you so very much, uh, Dr. Francis and then Baku. Uh, for being a part of the program today on the issues here at IKD 106.1 FM. You being a consultant, a vast consultant at that, 
what is your parting word, your word of advice to every listener out there? Earlier you said something about the genotype, which is actually very key to know about. But then, aside that, what are your advice to persons out there? Living with sickle cell and those that are yet to even dive into such. Um, uh, it, it starts with the couples who intend to get married. Okay. Uh, everyone should try and know their genotype. And when you know your genotype, you should you should take responsible responsible um, decision in what you do. It's essentially for people who who, who have the mosaico set who are SS. Who, who advice if if you are going to get a partner, let it be someone who has AA. Mm. So that you, your children can always be AS and they have, um, they are free of the disease. It stops. It stops with with the index parent. For people who are AS, when you know, it's it, they go for counseling. Mm. It's usually advice. Um, you try to find a partner who is not, who does not carry the SG. But people, even with the knowledge, still go ahead. Still take the risk. Yeah, still go ahead to get married. <laughs> you will hear some people tell you that they know couples who this time they never had any children. That's 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 their luck. Mm. It's not an everyday thing. It's not an everyday thing. <laughs> All right, uh, Dr. Thanks. Francis, I want to say thank you. Our time is fast spent already. We move straight ahead to the world news here at IK8106.1 FM. That is the voice of a vast consultant, hematologist, Dr. Francis Enenebaku. My name still remains the same, Adi Bambo Okoyemi, urging you to have a beautiful day ahead of you. One more time I say good afternoon to you. It's a bye for now. Mm -hmm.